Okay, so after about 40 minutes of conversation, this is what was recorded. We spoke an hour total. This call is now being recorded. <laughs> Just uh, find out from your state if it's like, um, what does it take to be a licensed, um, you know, a psychologist in, in order to practice as well. Okay. Yep. I wish you could have heard what happened. Yeah, yeah. Can I meet? Okay, okay. And then one more time, refresh my memory, our payment plan. Is it still going to be your military education benefits? Yes. Okay. Do you know the post-9-11, correct? Post-9-11, yep. I believe that's Chapter 33. 33, yes, correct. So um, now, uh, when's the last time you logged in VA.gov? Oh, I have it. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually working on trying to get into that now. I've been working okay. with ID today and ask VA, like so VA. Okay. Yeah. So I'm working on those trying to get in. Okay. So, um, we we do have the um. I'll send you the stats. Okay. <coughs> uh, VA.gov. What to complete it? But you've used it in the past, right? Yeah. Okay, because typically um, you all start with that 36 months, right? Um, do you know, like, approximate, like, how many months you've used? Um, let's see. If not, it's okay. You can always um, access your statement of benefits. That will show, okay, started with 36, how many you've used, how many is remaining. Well, I'm thinking that I had to use maybe 15 or 16 if I'm at 20. Um, and um, I do, I have my, I have one form from the VA that I managed to hold like on to. Like your certificate of eligibility? Yes, and it has, okay. like, you, know, they, you know, they do it in days on there, so it has like yes. days. <laughs> so, yeah. Glad I'm still on the line there. So, on, do you have access to that certificate now? Military is my okay. specialty. So. You're still here, Bobby. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> I was just getting ready to drop off when you guys started talking about the. So yeah, I was going to ask her to send it to us. <laughs> well, and nor another important date on the on the uh, eligibility is to check your delimiting date. Which day is that? The the delimiting date. That's the the expiration date of the benefits. Oh, I see. Well, you know what? I did get the information when I spoke with the VA recently. I have until 2024. Oh. So definitely want to I'll get you back on sure. track soon. Oh. I'll check so, for sure. Okay, so... Keep in mind, though, since... Wanna... Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, eligibility for this as Enrollment for 2016-17 academic year. As of November 2016, you are eligible. Ouch, I'm sorry. Eligible to receive 100% amount payable under Pulse 911. Um, length of day, length and day says 1522. For your your delimiting date says fifteen twenty two. Um, let me look for delimiting date. Cause I'm sure it will be on this form, right? Should be yes. Like, and if you said the VA stated that you have until twenty twenty four. Mm -hmm. So that's what that would be. That would be your delimiting date. That's the date that your benefits, even if you have still benefit remaining, that's the date that they expire. Okay. Okay. Uh, another important part, though, is in order for us to reactivate your benefits going forward, um, would require submitting a form twenty-two dash nineteen ninety-five. Since you've been yes, out of attendance for more than a year. I have that information here. Um, I got it from the VA, but I have twenty-one months and seventeen days. And I have until 2000, October 14, 2025. Oh, perfect. So that means that's the expiration date. So if you hit that October 21st of 2025 and say you still have 10 months of VA benefit remaining, that means that those months go away. They, they, they become right. expired. 
Right. Exactly. And that's kind of what prompted me to also to reach out to you guys because I'm no. like, I don't want to lose it. I, I'd rather use it. Now, as far as that 22-1995, when you complete that on your student website, mm -hmm. or not your student website, but the, the VA website, um, it gives you, and uh, there's a page there, it says, you know, a confirmation page that the 22-1995 was, was submitted. All that we require is a screenshot of that confirmation page. We don't require the actual 22-1995 itself. We used to process that years ago, but due to changes in the VA, we, we just require that, uh, that screenshot, right? Okay. Easy enough. Oh, perfect. So, so I'm glad I stayed on the line there. So right now we've confirmed that you still have approximately 21 months of benefit left, and but you're dealing dates until 2025. Um, and we're going to have you submit that 22-1995 to go ahead and update and transfer your benefits again so that we can start to certify you once you're back in attendance here with us, right? Okay. Um, quick question for you. How long does it sure. take on your process the information? Like Good question there. So even once we have all of your paperwork on file, we won't be able to reactivate your file with our with our internal VA department until after you've posted attendance back in the class. Okay. Okay. So the file would still stay in deactivated status until attendance has been posted. Understand. All right. Yeah. And then so it's been a little while. It goes back to our normal status. What happens is once everything's activated. Um, each class can normally get certified twice. The first time is right after your first week of attendance. The only thing that we're submitting for at that point is for, for attendance was zero tuition fees. And then once the class is completed and the grade is posted, that's when we go back and we submit an amendment. When we submit that amendment, that's when we're actually billing the VA. So we don't bill the VA until the, uh, until the grade is posted. I see. Okay. Good enough. Is there anything else you guys feel I should know? No, that's the main part is on the on the finance side, you know, especially with you know, the military benefits getting that twenty two dash nineteen ninety five in and then completing both the uh, twenty one twenty two and the twenty two twenty three FAFSA applications. Okay, I can do that. And the FAFSA applications are mainly, you know, they're for both the loans and the grants. You know, the important part too is if you, as long as we have your VA documentation on file, we can get you started for classes. The financial aid portion, you know, you can accept student loans if you wish to. Um, we normally suggest against it when you don't need it because you know they are loans. So the more you take out loans, the larger your payments are. Um, but that's okay. up to you on there. Now, um, one other thing to keep in mind too, as far as the financial aid and um, say if you do do accept student loans. Um, or even if you don't, if you if you if you submit and you qualify for things like the Pell Grant, as far as having funds sent to you, uh, the process has changed a little bit since the last time you attended because it's been a lot. So okay. the easiest way to factor um, consider you know, when we certify you for the academic year, our academic year is 24 credits and 40 weeks of instruction. So that's eight classes that are split between two four class dispersion periods. Now, in that set of four classes, we invoice all four of those classes at once. So the easiest way to describe it is if you take the cost of tuition fees for that set of four classes and consider it like a bucket, right? Uh -huh. So depending on how much comes in, uh, depending on the loan or grants, determines how far that bucket gets filled in. So say we qualify for the Pell Grant, but we're only using the Pell Grant, not loans. Well, that bucket may get about half full. So it really depends upon the number, so we wouldn't know until that gets certified. Well, those funds go into that bucket first. And they, they stay in there in that bucket until whenever your VA payment comes in, VA payments take precedence. So each VA payment is like dropping a rock in that bucket. So once we have enough rocks in that bucket to make the bucket overflow is when you receive the excess. I see. And once we finish so, that set of four so classes, we just get a new bucket. Right. Okay. So it, it, that's not ongoing. That's just for every set of four classes. All right. Correct. So it's for each academic year. So um, before we used to be able to send the you know the financial aid to to students as excess right at the beginning. And now it's has the VA payments create make uh, VA payments come in and, and create excess. So until VA payment or even enough VA payments come in to make that bucket overflow, there's no excess. It's not until that bucket starts to overflow that we, the excess comes out. I understand. Now, if say there's loans as well as the grants and that bucket gets all the way filled right to start with, then Obviously, if the bucket's already filled at the top, every time a VA payment comes in, it's going to overflow and additional excess. 
So that's why there's a variable in there depending on funds acceptance. You know what? And I think that's kind of what ended up happen, happening to me last time I attended. Um, the bucket was full. It had, you know, funds from all three sources in it. Mm-hmm. And um, instead of taking the SS or taking, you know, like I, making sure that all my, um, I guess, assessments were paid with the VA, uh, 